All right, hey guys, uh, back here for another tournament match. Uh, you know, usually in these, I don't like to like like try to have some big moment because I feel like almost every time I do that, I come off looking like a total asshole. But I will attempt to do one right now because I'm playing David for the fourth time across all trivia formats, and he has beaten me. I'd say pretty, pretty soundly, like most of those times. And, you know, I'm fit, and I kind of, I knew going in, I got an opportunity to possibly play him again. If I take care of business first two matches, well, you know, I took care of business. So did he, I, I am very excited to play him today for that reason. Cause I feel like I can exercise some demons today. You know, last year I took down the number one seed in this tournament. And I'm pretty confident I can do that here again today. Hey, how's it going? Um, yeah. Um, number one here, number one seed here. Um, playing Mark. Yeah. I mean, he's, he just said, like, you know, we play like three times before and I've uh, won before that. But then this time it feels a little different. I mean, uh, no excuses, but I mean, I'm coming in here just a little bit uh, like a busy work week, but like it's, I couldn't study as much as I wanted to do, but hopefully I think I did the best I could. Um, I'm going into this thing, like not as number one C, just like just another player trying to like get to the next round. So that's how I'm looking at it. Um, yeah, this, this is going to be some match, I think. So we'll, can't wait to play. Let's go. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Open Night Trivia League. Antel is what we call it. If you're one of the cool kids, I'm here with one of my good colleagues in the trivia community. Mr. Kaiser Wang, how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing well. We got people trying to exercise demons, trying to make the number four, which means death work. And we got some people just pretending to be humble, pretending. I think we have a good match today. I think we do too. These guys uh, have won two matches already. This is the semifinals of the tournament. Winners going on to the finals for a shot at that illustrious, elusive Antel Singles Championship. Uh, without further ado, let's bring these guys in. Introducing first, your number four seed with a record of six wins, two defeats. It is the big chill, Mark Manchaka. Mark, how are you today, sir? Very good, ready to go. All right. And last but certainly not least, the number one seed, a record of six wins, one defeat. It is diehard David Nishimoto. How are you, sir? I'm good. I'm ready. Well, you guys have all been here before, but there is an off chance this might be somebody's first time watching an opening night trivia league video. So how round one works, it is a whiteboard round. You're going to get 10 questions from 10 different categories. I will read a question and I will go back and forth with Mr. Kaiser over there. Uh, you can write your answers down. You get 20 seconds to answer. When the 20 seconds is up, you put your pens down, you turn your boards around and say your answer aloud when I call on you. If you get all 10 questions right, there's an 11th question. We'll get to that if we get to that. Any questions? Okay. Nope. Nope. Good. All right. So I will read the odds. Kai's will read the evens. Let's start with your first question, which comes in the category of recent releases. What recent release features performances from Diane Kruger, Penelope Cruz, and Lupita Nyong'o? So, uh, sorry, I skipped on. My sound went off. What was the, what was right. the name? Technical repeat is fine. What recent release features performances from Diane Kruger, Penelope Cruz, and Lupita Nyong'o? So two of these actresses are very gorgeous, and uh, the other one is Penelope Cruz. Oof. <laughs> I think some people say she's uh, classically beautiful, uh, as far as I've been told. I mean, I, 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 you know, that's fine, Kaiser. You, that's a perfectly valid. You, you, Five, you. <laughs> four, three, two, and one. Oh. We'll start with David. Uh, the, the three, five, five. And Mark. I remembered it as soon as I heard pens down. The 355 is correct. <clears throat> and move on to your second question in the category of Oscars. How many times did Ingrid Bergman win Best Actress? <clears throat> now, does she rate on your scale, Kaiser? Is she okay? She's of a different breed. She's Swedish. That's a different kind of scale, like all like altogether, sir. <laughs> all right, good. Good. I mean, I'm glad. Penelope Cruz, ugly. Angry Bergman, we don't comment. No comment. Five, four, three, two, one. Mark. When in doubt, guess three. And David. But one. Right in the middle, too. 
Okay. With that, no for problem. Movies, for the movies, uh, get for movies, uh, Gaslight and Anastasia. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Your third question is going to come in the category of animated films. In Toy Story, Woody initially describes flying as what? So, John, if you have to write a story, would it be about toys? Uh, there probably be toys in it, I would think, you know. And I mean, I'm sure you, um, I might be the only one old enough to remember this, but there was actually like a, like a live action kind of Toy Story thing, like an ABC special. That And Toy Story totally rips off the plot to it. But we'll discuss that later. Oh. Five, four, oh. three, two, mm-hmm. one. We'll start with David. Uh, falling with style. And Mark. Yeah, you're not going to ruin anything for me, John. Uh, falling with style. <laughs> falling with style is correct. Uh, we'll talk about it later. It, it, it's definitely worth watching. I watched it a bunch of times as a child. I don't remember the name of it, though. And we go on to your next question in the category of classics. Who stars as George M. Cohen in Yankee Doodle Dandy? No. This is a song that they make us kids play in bands and orchestras oh. in school here. Then have you have you ever played it? Yeah, I've played it. I used to play the trumpet back in the day. Surprise. Yeah. I have lots of talents. Five, four, I can see that. three, two, <laughs> one. Mark? Is it Tony Curtis? And David? I don't know. I made up a name, I think. George Kearns. <laughs> Both incorrect. Looking for James or Jimmy Cagney. Okay. Um... Your fifth question comes in the category of the 1990s. What is the name of the store that Harry and Marv plan to rob in Home Alone 2, Lost in New York? So, John, what's a a city that you most want to be lost in? A city that I would get lost in or that I'd like to get lost in? Uh, The letter. I'd like to get lost in? Uh, I don't know. I'd like to go to... I don't even know. Dublin? I, I, I don't, I don't see <laughs> That's a legit answer. Oh, four, <laughs> hey, three, Japan two, one. You shouldn't get lost in New York. It's a great no. system. I think it's repeat a good question. Or repeat the question. Yeah. Repeat. Repeat. Is, is that Mark's repeat? Yeah. 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 What is the name of the store Harry and Marv plan to rob in Home Alone 2, Lost in New York? And yeah, that joke has been made before. Like, How do you get lost in New York? It's a grid system. The streets are numbered. You shouldn't get lost in New York. But... uh. I mean, the, hard right the, now. the main character is a dumbass, so. Oh, yeah. Well, what? Wait. He's a child. He, he does, the, the, the real question is, does he look better than Penelope Cruz? Five, four. I mean, the traps was genius. Now, no. Why? Uh, we'll start with David. Duncan's toy chest. And Mark. That was it. Uh, good. Duncan's no. toy chest is correct. We move on to your next category of quotes. Which 2000s comedy features the quote, am I not turtly enough for the turtle club? No that comment. Is that, that is that quote. That is that quote. <laughs> no comment. Yeah. Five. Four, Repeat. Okay, so Davis repeats in the category of quotes, which 2000s comedy features the quote, am I not totally enough for the Turtle Club? There's not even anything I can say about this. I, 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 not that I would even give it away, but the, everything I say, would I feel like I'd be giving it away, so I'm not going to say anything about it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this, is a John, this is a John question. Five, four... Three, two, one. Uh, we are over to Mark. TMNT? <laughs> Good guess. Uh, David. Um, she's the man. Unfortunately, we were thinking of the Dana Carvey vehicle, the master of disguise. Turtle, turtle. Your next question, your seventh question, comes in the category of movie release dates. The original versions of Sleuth the Heartbreak Kid and the Mechanic 
were all released in what year? So, John, your opinion on Dana Carvey? When I was a child and Dana Carvey was first like a thing, he was very funny, but I was also a child. And I think he does decent impressions. Half of his impressions are decent, half of them are garbage, and Wayne's World is good. That's my opinion on Dana Carvey. That's always yeah. Yeah. The previous movie? No. <laughs> Three, two, one. We'll start with David. 1974. And Mark. It's, um, I said 76. Both coming in a little too late. We're looking for 1972. Feel better. Feel better. Okay. okay. Move oh, on man. to your next question in directors. Who directed The People versus Larry Flint? I used to have this poster in my bedroom when I was in uh, high school. That's how old I am. I mean, I wasn't born, so no comment. <laughs> I worked in a movie theater, so I could just take the poster. So it was good. It was fun. One of the perks, I, I guess. Yeah, and until I took the wrong poster and then I was let go. Five, four, <laughs> three, two, one. Uh, we'll start with Mark. I said Herbert Ross. And David. Uh, Milos Foreman. Milos Foreman is correct. I never remember that guy. And your penultimate question comes in the category of biopics. In the social network, what percentage were Eduardo's shares diluted down to? Oh. So, John, I got to yeah. ask, what was the poster that got you fired? Scream, of course. Oh, yeah. that's unfortunate. Yeah, but I had that poster. I think the uh, the owner of the building wanted the poster, and then I waited for a day he wasn't there, and I just took it. So I was a bad, bad boy. <laughs> yeah, Scream is whatever. Scream, scream sucks. Relax, Bill. Uh, we'll go to David. 2%. And Mark. This is an insane round one question. I think it's 1.5%. Guys are both too high. It is three hundredths of 1%. 0. 0. Oh my God. I didn't write these, so I don't know. I, did not I, 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 I actually, I, mean, I, I think I might have been a little, I, I might have said point three. I might have said point three. Go ahead. Uh, read no, them the last are starting early. <laughs> okay. Your final question in horror. What 2000s horror film primarily takes place in Bridgeton, Maine? You said 2000s, right? Can I? Yes. So, okay. I, haven't been to, I haven't been to Bridgeton, but I hear it's lovely this time of year. Leaves are changing. New England foliage. But let's see what they wrote. Five, four, three, two, and one. Pens down. Uh, Mark. This is like a brutal round one. I said the mist. And David. Oh, that might be right. Uh, but cursed. Mark is right. Only Holy Stephen shit. King, only Stephen King movies take place in Maine. Yeah. The mist is correct. Fuck. That sounds right. With that, at the end of round one, Kaiser, correct me if I'm wrong. I got David with four, Mark with two. Yep, that's what I have. All right. Our second round is the deep cut round. Before this match, both of these gentlemen chose movies. Uh, they both watched those movies. They watched their own movie. They watched their opponent's movie. And we wrote some deep cut questions about those movies. Uh, David, in a minute, will decide which movie goes first. But if we ask about his movie, he'd get one point. Mark would get two points. And in Mark's movie, David would get two points. And Mark would get one point. So the movies we chose today, uh, Mark chose Ted 2. David chose uh, The Trial of Chicago 7. With that being said, David, where are we going first? Uh, let's let's do my movie, Chicago 7. Okay. Guys, would you like to read the Chicago 7 questions or the Ted 2 questions? Oh, Chicago 7, please. Holy shit. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> those questions. You say that like there's something wrong with Ted 2. Yeah. Right? It's just yeah, garbage. Okay. okay. In, in any case, in any case. All right, gentlemen, are you ready for your first question in the trial of the Chicago 7? Okay. The first question. What day did Stahl first meet with Hayden and uh, Davis? And we need month and date. The year two? No, just a month and a, oh, and okay. a date. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, you cut out on the names? Like, who, who... Uh, okay, I'll repeat. What day did Stahl first meet with Hayden and Davis?
I'll be honest, I've seen this movie like two years ago. I don't remember these character names. There's a lot of character names in this movie. Yeah. Five, four, three, two, one. We'll start with David. August 10th. And Mark? I said August 2nd. August 2nd is oh. correct. Okay, so tie game. As we move yep. on to the next question. Abby says the two men harassing the girl with the flag are from what fraternity? Okay, I think I know who Abby is at least. Yeah. I think, I think. Ar arguably, like, in the realm of, like, American history, he's the most famous name out of the out of those people. Oh, really? Shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But... I don't, I'm sure they don't teach that where you, where you are. Five. Oh, four, no. Of course not. Three, two, one. We'll start with Mark. It's a Kappa Gamma douchebag. And David. Oh, I, I don't know. Kappa they do side. belong, according to Abby, to the fraternity of Kappa Gamma douchebag. That is correct. Yeah. All right. Your next question. What sample of Tom's writing is cited as proof he often uses Oh, so let me repeat. What sample of Thomas writing is cited as proof he often uses possessive pronouns when he speaks and writes? Okay, I also know who, who this guy is. This fucker. <laughs> They're getting all the strong opinions from Kaiser today. I can't, I can't wait. I, I, hopefully we get a good closing like we did in the last time you hosted where you get to just totally just... There's three Americans here now. I, I just still don't care. If you want to drop an F America, I'm all for it. Five, four, three, two, and one. We're back over to David. Uh, I don't know. I don't have it. And Mark. There we go. The Port Huron Statement? The Port Huron Statement is correct. This is great. This is okay. real. Fuck. We want to your second to last question. How many of the defendants' names does a judge incorrectly pronounce during the opening statements? Oh my god. Now this fucking judge. Everything that is wrong with uh, America, this judge represents it. This fucker. I can't even argue with that. I mean, he's I think he's supposed to be like an indefensible character, to be honest with you. He, he was berserk. Five, oh. four, three. I'll repeat the question. All right. So, Mark, second repeat. How many of the defendants' names does a judge incorrectly, incorrectly pronounce during the opening statements? With contempt of this court. Five, a lot of contempt in this movie. Three, two, one, and we're back over to Mark. I have two. And David. I put two. Two is correct. He mispronounces Weiner and Dellinger. All right. So, your final question in the trial of the Chicago Seven. After Bobby is get. What two words does Judge Hoffman use to describe how he tried to get him to sit? God. This okay. scene was pretty good. I like I like this scene. Not, not, not that I'm into them, you know, mistreating people, but I did like the scene. <laughs> okay. I think I know who Bobby is. I'll ask you after the uh, question. I think I know. Five, four, three, two, one. Hands down. We'll start with David. Mm, I got nothing. So. And Mark. I said calmly and fairly. One out of the two. It is he tried fairly and impartially. Impartially. Okay. okay. Is Bobby Yaya Abdul Martin the a second? Yes. Yeah. Ah, he is. Okay. Okay, so the score with that, is ten, the score 10 to five. Ten to five, correct. Ten to okay. five in favor of Mark, and we'll move over to the, the later movie. You know, Ted Two. You guys ready for your questions in Ted Two? Sure. Here we go. Your first question. 
Sam Jones compares his sperm count to the plot of what movie? Okay. Is Ted the one with Mila Kunis? That's the first. That's no, Ted Wolf's the first one. Oh, never mind. Mila Kunis is mentioned in this movie. You see, I can't even division between the between those those two fucking movies. Yeah, they're so fuck. Two, one, hands down. Mark. I am legend. And David. Yeah, I am legend. I am legend is great. Your second question. What anthropologist does Mian quote in his court argument? So Sam Jones, I believe, the original Flash Gordon. Yeah. Never, never met a guy, never seen a movie, and because he's he's in Ted, I hate him even more. <laughs> I, I, how many people we have to the Kaiser hates? At least five, four, three. <laughs> Two, one, uh, Dave. It's brutal. No, I don't remember. And Mark. You said Prince Don Hughes. Uh, you switched some stuff around. It's no. Don, Don, Don Price Hughes. Don Price, Price Hughes. Hughes. Okay. Oh, okay. oh, well, one of them is so wrong. It's no more names, please. No more names. <laughs> okay. All right. I think you're going to be good. Your third question. Ted asks Sam if the mascot for Arizona State University was what specifically? Uh, does, your, does your university have a mascot? My university? Uh, yeah. yeah. The, it's funny. My high school and my, well, my high school and my college had the same mascot, but they have different team oh. names. So I went to the Bears and then we were the Rangers. But for some reason, even though we were the Rangers, our mascot was a bear. You go, go, go figure. Five, four, three, two, one. Uh, we're back over to Mark. A broken condom. And David. A broken condom. A broken condom is correct. Your fourth question. Ted reads from a bill that says Tammy spent how much at Filene's basement? It's Filene's basement, too. Jeez, I mean, just going nuts at Filene's basement. Seriously, ridiculous. Is that a real place? I don't know. Either. Um, it definitely was when I was a kid. Five, okay. four. I haven't seen him recently. Two, one. We're back over to David. One hundred twenty-nine dollars. And Mark. It's at one hundred twenty-seven. One hundred and twenty-nine dollars is correct. Damn it. And your final question. Ted loses his rewards membership to what restaurant after it is revealed he's not legally a person? This I don't know if it is a real restaurant. <laughs> That's a big one. I'm sure it's a Boston. I'm sure it's, and it's a Boston locality. I, I so, don't care. Not that I'm trying to give you hints, but there's one one here. Five, four, three, two, one. Mark. Papa Gino's. And David. Papa Gino's. That is correct. And with that, I have it tied. Do you have it tied? Uh, yes, I have it tied. Again. I have it tied at 13 big points apiece. With that being said, we're going to go to round three. Round three is our IMDb round. Now, for those of you just joining us, it's a little complicated. I'll walk you through it. Uh, they're going to get three questions each. Um, we're two, three, and five points, respectively. For the two-point question, they'll get the year of release of a movie, the lead actor, and some genres. For the three-point question, they'll get the year of release. They'll get the director of the movie, and then some plot keywords. For five points, they get just the decade, and they're allowed to pick from any three of the exact year, the director, the co-actor, or the actor, the genres, or the plot keywords. With that being said, uh, it is a tied, but David, since you're the higher rank competitor, you get to choose. The choice, that means nothing. Do you want set one or set two? Go set one. You'll go set one. I guess since, Mark, since you are technically lower seated, we're just going to ask you your set two questions first. Since I read Ted, will you read Mark set two? Okay. So, Mark, your two-pointer, your year is 2009. Your actor is Johnny Depp, and your genre is action, biography, and crime. Public enemies. That is correct for two points. David, your two-pointer. Your year is 2008. 
Your actor is Josh Brolin. And your genres are biography, comedy, and drama. Oh, uh, W. W is correct. Fuck. Okay. Give me some. It's a W. W. W period. It's a comedy? Okay. I guess that's comedy. <laughs> okay. So, Mark, your three pointer. Okay. Give me a sec. Okay. Your year is 1976. Your director is Alfred Hitchcock. And your keywords are psychic, taxi driver, and kidnappers. Family plot. That is correct for three points. David, you're a three pointer. Your year is 1983. Your director is Barbara Streisand, and your keywords are Judaism, Polish, and cross dressing. Is that Yentl? That is Yentl. That is correct for three. Okay. <clears throat> so, Mark, your ticket is a 1980s. So, pick three from year, director, actor. Co-actor and keywords. Don't like that. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't think it's gonna anything else gonna help me out here. Uh, let's go. Director, actor, keywords. Okay, so once again, your ticket is the the nineteen eighties, and you have one well, uh, one repeat left. Mm -hmm. Okay. 1980s, your director is Richard Donner, your actor is Matthew Broderick, and your keywords are wolf, curse, and transformation. Five, four, three, two, Repeat the question. That's your final repeat. Yeah. Your decade is the 1980s. Your director is Richard Donner. Your actor is Matthew Broderick. And your keywords are wolf, curse, and transformation. Five, four, three, two. Team Wolf 2. I, I don't know. That is incorrect. Your answer is Lady Hawk. Oh, my God. Okay. All right. David, you need to hit this to him. Otherwise, we're going to sudden death. Oh, God. Okay. Your record is the 1970s. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Okay. Um... Hmm. hmm. Well, okay. Um, lead actor, keywords. Oh. Go co-actor. Actor, co-actor, keywords. Your decade is the 1970s. Your actor is Jack Lemon. Your co-actor is Jack Guilford, and your keywords are strippers, insurance fraud, and animal rights campaign. Five, four, three, two, repeat. You have one repeat remaining. Your decade is the 1970s. Your actor is Jack Lemon. Your co-actor is Jack Guilford. Your keywords are strippers, insurance fraud, and animal rights campaign. Because I gotta save this for certain death. Um, Avanti. That is incorrect. We're looking for save the tiger. Save uh, the tiger. So we are tied at 18 points and we'll be going to sudden death when we get back.
At the end of round three, Mark and David are tied with 18 points apiece. That means we will go to sudden death. The rules of sudden death are as follows. We will ask you more whiteboard questions. We will not give you the category of those questions. They will just be general questions. They can be from any category whatsoever. Uh, the first person to take the lead will win the match. Any questions? David, you have one repeat remaining. Mark, you have no repeats remaining. And I will start with the first question. Who won? Best Actress for Films Released in 1990. Five, four, three, two, and one. We'll start with David. Emma Thompson. And Mark. I also said Emma Thompson. Both incorrect. Looking for Kathy Bates in Misery. I, oh my gosh. God. Can't believe it. All right. Okay. <laughs> I'll take your I'll take your second question. What is the name of a sword that various martial artists are fighting over in Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon? The sword? Yeah. All right. Okay. What is the name of the sword? Five, four, three, two, one. Mark. Said Fury. And David. Is it Green Destiny? And your winner, two questions in sudden death, Die Hard, David Ishimoto. Oh, the God. answer is Green Destiny. With that, go to our purse match interviews, starting with our unfortunate second place finisher, Mark Menchaca. Mark. Uh, it doesn't get closer than that. You know, obviously everything was tough all the way through, but you guys were answering the same tough questions. So, and it was really tight. How are you feeling? Uh, I mean, if, if call back to my, uh, to my uh, pre-match, this is my fourth time facing Dave. This is my fourth loss to him. So, you know, it just, which again, three losses in the league, two of them are to David. So it's just, I cannot beat this guy, and what's and what sucks is that uh, this was the match to do it. Uh, uh, we both had a not great round one. Uh, I was in spitting distance from him, and I had several opportunities in round two to uh, to come ahead in uh, going into round three. I didn't uh, again missing two questions on my movie that w either one of those would have done it. So. Um, you know, I I feel good in the sense that, you know, at least took him the sudden death. That is something. But, you know, I, I feel like they, they, these are two matches. I think we're – I think both times, like, you know, I had him here and I just kind of dropped the ball. So, you know, but hopefully he wins this tournament and, you know, he wins the belt. And, you know, it, and maybe I lost to the winner of the tournament and the new champion. So. Right. That being said, as they would say in every match, so the season will be ending here for you. You'll be back next year, definitely, and you'll still be high ranked. You've still got a great record. Anybody you're looking to face that you haven't faced, not named David. You really set me up for that. Like, <laughs> well, I was really, I mean, like, I, I, like, he's one of the people left. I've been wanting Payson in this league for a long time. I, I remember, I think I said last year. At the end of last year, I wanted to play Payson. So I, at the end of last year again, at the end of this year again, I really want to play Payson. I have not played him. I played him once in a, a league. I'm not sure is going to come back. Um, we're not sure. I played him once in multiplex. You know, one and one. I like. I really, I would really like to play him one more time. Let's break the tie. I want Payson very badly. I will take that up the chain to the person in charge. With that being said, an excellent match. We're going to. Send them backstage. Bring in today's winner, David Nishimoto. How are you feeling? You know, obviously, same thing. I'm gonna say it was rough. That was rough. The whole thing, all the way through, it was rough. How are you feeling? You took my word. Took the words out of my mouth. Uh, it's rough. That was a rough uh, game for me. Round one, there was something. There was some question I should have got, and I just missed that. Um, round two, I was like, I did much worse than I was ex expecting for my movie. Uh, uh, man. Um, thank God I, yeah, I battled back a little bit, uh, ended up tying after round two and it was just, 
Yeah, I think, um, yeah, it's, it's hard because every time you pick the, a, a set, one of them can go like the right way. So I don't want to go the other way. And then if I had Mark's set, I think I would have posed it already. But yeah, um, it was a great game. I mean, Mark, it's always been, it's always a battle every time I play him. Um, and yeah, I mean, just, I'm, I'm thank, uh, yeah, I'm so glad I get past this one and I can face, you know, go in the next round, the final round. I have no idea who you're facing in the final. <laughs> I, I think, I, I think it's between <gasps> Payson and Kelly, I think. Oh, that match, uh, uh, that match will have dropped by the point this match comes back up. So I do know who won that match. Uh, you will be playing Payson. Yeah, I was there. Yeah, there you you'll be playing Payson in the final. So that makes sense. Uh, how you feel about that? Um, I cannot wait. Yeah, we I cannot go wait. Again. It's. <laughs> I know Payson seems pretty um, determined and you know pretty ready to like win this whole thing. So um yeah i mean we played each other before you know i've been on the winning side of that uh, before so it's it's really gonna be an interesting match as long as are you say. saying you're the a player in ginyu force <laughs> i'm saying you're, nothing you're i'm not saying anything <laughs> i'm not saying that breaking it's news be, david very even it's gonna be a very even match yeah. i say yeah it's he has a lot of um he really wants to win this i know it and i really do too and it's just gonna be good yeah all right well it was great seeing you today let's Take it to final words. Let me drop it, David, out of the phone right now. Kaiser, I'll give you the final word on it. Um, obviously, great match. Like these two guys, they didn't play well today, but even though they, they didn't play well, I, I still think it was a like, pretty entertaining night. He went to sudden death, and yeah, whenever these two play, it's always a battle. We'll see a Kinyu battle again and again and again till the end of time, it seems. But Okay, so that, that, that finals happens. match should be dropping soon. Tune in here. The only place you're going to see it is in Anto, an opening night trivia league. So until then, I'm John Marr. That's Kaiser Wong. Mark Manchak is backstage. David Nishimoto is backstage. They played a hell of a game. Show them some love. Find them. Like them. Come back here. Like, subscribe. Find us on Facebook. Join the group. Join the game if you'd like to. Until next time, this has been opening night trivia league. Have a great night. Fuck America. <laughs>